welcome to Entertainment Extra with Joe Crawford on RemicTV.com. We're excited to have you here with us. We hope you're enjoying all our shows that we've been doing. We're like three months into Entertainment Extra. I can't believe it's gone by so fast and we've had some great guests. And our next guest that we have on Entertainment Extra today is a singer, is a guitar player. We're going to have him on in just a few minutes. Steve Barton will be joining us here on Entertainment Extra. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you for making the ads and the comments on Facebook and following us with Remick TV and Entertainment Extra with Joe Crawford. If you want to follow us, you can do so at my website, joecrawfordlive.com. You can add on the Twitter. I love the Twitter followers and the questions that you've been asking for the shows. And also, again, you can click on the Facebook icon that will connect you to Entertainment Extra with Joe Crawford. So, like I promised you, we have now joining us, he is from the band Translator, the front man, Mr. Steve Barton. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you? I'm great, and I'm honored to be here on your three-month anniversary show. This is a real thrill. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm glad you can make it. It's kind of, we won't say what time it is, but it's kind of early for you because we're taping this and because uh, you're out in California. So how's California? Oh, it's beautiful. It's been sunny and lovely. Nice. Have you always lived out in California? Um, yes. Nice. So I live in, in the L.A. area now, but um, I lived in San Francisco for a long, long time. Okay, so you really haven't really experienced any Canadian winters then, have you? No, I, <laughs> I barely experienced it. Californian winter. <laughs> well, we've been actually lucky this uh, this year with the winter. But Steve, we have you on um, because you've written a new CD, and it's been in honor of uh, your father that just recently passed away. And the name of the CD is uh, Projector. Now, yeah. um, of course, it was in honor of your father. But what what else inspired you to create this? And by uh, reading some information, it kind of just flowed out of you. That's true. Um, when my dad, it is in honor of my dad, not all the songs are sort of, quote, about my dad, but they're all written sort of under that umbrella of that period of time. And he, um, you know, got sick in the hospital and then eventually passed away. And the day after he, he did die, I was sitting actually in the same chair that I'm sitting in right now. And... Um, I was in, it was the day after, and I was at home all by myself, and I picked up my guitar, and this song just, literally, as I played it, it just, it wrote itself, and it was over by the time I finished playing it, and it was called Super Fantastic Guy, which is on the record, and also, I ended up singing it at his memorial. Oh, nice. And then after that, whenever I picked my guitar up for about a month, all these songs started coming out. It was really a pretty amazing experience, and, um, so I played them, I went to a friend of mine, Marvin Etzioni, um, a dear old friend of mine who I've known for a long time, went to his house and said, you know, I have a few songs I want to play you. And we sat down and by the end of the couple of nights we got together, I played about 18 songs. Wow. And um, some of which were written a little before, like right when my dad was ill, and some, the bulk of them written afterwards. Um, and he said, well, this sounds like an album. And so one thing led to another, and it, his idea was to make the album with me playing all the instruments, since it's a very personal record, as opposed to all my other, you know, albums, other than the ones with Translator, which of course is a band, or my, my other solo albums, which I also have a band for. So this was kind of a risk for me and a, and a, uh, a different way to do it, and it, it worked out great. Now, you mentioned that you played all the other instruments. I just know you to sing and play the guitar. What other instruments were involved that you played in this uh, specific album? Well, when I say all the instruments, it's not like it's, um, uh, you know, the first Emmett Rhodes record or the first Paul McCartney record where, you know, it sounds like a band playing, but it's really just them. It, it, um, there's some drums on it, not very much in a couple of places, but whenever there's more than one guitar, it's, it's all the music on it is me. Yeah. So mostly guitar, but uh, there's a few little touches of percussion here and there. Wow. So um, can, you have a copy of the CD that we can uh, see here, Projector? I do. I don't know if it's... You can see it. Up, just a little bit higher there. 
Oh, there we go. Projector, yeah, and that can probably be bought. Um, you can go to your website, stevebarton.com or... Stevebartonmusic.com. Uh, oh, stevebartonmusic.com. Sorry, I apologize. And also, uh, I think it's available on iTunes, too, no? It's on iTunes. Yes, it is. Nice. And, uh, Steve, you're no stranger to the music industry. You've been doing this, um, well, you've been with Translator since uh, the late 70s, 1979, yep. I believe. And uh, you've been around just a few years longer than I've been actually born. <laughs> yeah. And uh, how did uh, Translator come, or, come about? Well, like you say, it was around 79. And th that was in Los Angeles. And we were a, a trio. I've been writing songs since I was a, a boy, really, since I was about 12. And um, um, the drummer translator, Dave Sheff, and I were dear old friends. And we decided, let's just put a band together. And he knew the bass player, Larry Decker. And then there was another guitar player, Bob Darlington, and songwriter who came, and that became the band. Um, and Bob also wrote songs, and so we write songs. And so we um, formed a band, and it was together making records for uh, till about 86. And then we took, we, it, we didn't break up, we took what ended up being a big hiatus because we also have something new coming out. So it's it's been a really productive period. But Translator um, was just an amazing experience. We moved from Los Angeles as a band to San Francisco. Okay. Which, like I mentioned earlier, I lived in San Francisco for a long time, and you know, I slept on uh, on the floor in a down sleeping bag for about six months in someone's front room, and it was great. It was great. <laughs> now, can can we say what the special uh, thing that Translator has going on, or is it a hidden secret right now? No, it's um, it's not a secret. It's um, an album called Big Green Lawn, which actually is available online starting tomorrow. Oh, nice! So yeah. April seventeenth. Yeah. Is, uh, and it's, it's, yeah, it's called Big Green Lawn. It's by Translator, and it's all new material. It's all four original members. Wow, that, that and usually that doesn't happen after so many years being together. No, I know. Well, we've done a few shows here and there through the years, and, um, you know, it's still when we play, it's like no time went by. Nice. Now, what, what keeps a band together for that long? Because usually you hear a lot of bands separate apart, and they form their own bands, or they go off, like you've done some solo work and that, but also, but you're still together with Transit with the same members. What keeps you guys together? I think it's, there, there's a certain chemistry, you know, th that happens with Translator, and we, even the times that, when we're apart, we can't deny that that's there. And when we come together, it's it's obvious that, that something special goes on with, with the four of us. Now, do any of the other members get maybe, say, upset or jealous that you've gone on your own? Or, like, now you've done your own here of your own CD of album, Dedication to Your Father? No, not at all. No, I mean, I... we're all... Uh, Bob, the other guitar player, has an album out called Prism uh, that just came out. And... You know, people have played with all different people, and they, in fact, Dave and Larry played bass and drums on my first solo album, and Bob played guitar on a couple of songs. So no, it's we we all you know keep uh, meshing together through the years. <laughs> awesome, Steve Barton from Translator, uh, his new album Projector is uh, available on iTunes and on his website stevebartonmusic.com. And uh, what kind of um, genre of music is translator. Well, I would say we were um, maybe British influenced rock and roll, something like that. Yeah. You know, I don't know. It was songs with a little bit of a dark edge, but um, people should check it out if they are not familiar with it. They go on translatormusic.com. It's definitely worth it. it it's a band worth discovering if you don't know the band. Okay, and uh, you, you've you been mostly known predominantly in the California area with San Francisco and Los Angeles, and uh, you guys are doing this new album that's being released on April 17th. Are you guys planning a tour when you come up maybe to Canada? Have you ever been in Canada and toured in Canada? Yeah, we've, we played in Vancouver and I think a couple of spots on the East Coast but of Canada because we, we toured the U.S. pretty extensively. Um, back then. But yeah, we're going to definitely do some live shows. We're not sure how that's going to work out yet, but we're definitely planning on doing live shows. Beautiful. And uh, we know about uh, the states, we've been in the states, but for our Canadian uh, viewers, do you think maybe there'll be some Canadian dates? Oh, absolutely. I'd love that. That'd <laughs> be great. What do, you, what do you like about Canada? 
you know, like I said, I've been to Vancouver was so beautiful. Yeah. And the um, there was this old section of town that was just, I mean, it, it was years ago that I was there, but it really stuck in my in my mind, my memory, just absolutely beautiful. Nice. And uh, we're again speaking with Steve Barton, stevebartonmusic.com. Show your album again there, Steve. Uh, Projector, that's the new one that's available. It's been inspired by your father, who just recently passed away. And, and there's a, a picture when you open the CD um, of my dad. He did voiceovers. Oh, nice. Actor. What a handsome young gentleman. I know, with this cool, I think it says NBC. Yeah. I, I can see where you got the good looks from. Definitely from your father's side. <laughs> now, are, I was about 17 there. Oh, there you go. Now, were you the only child, like it's just about, uh, like in the family, or have you had other siblings growing up? Yeah, I have a sister, and she's, um, we're, we're very, very close. She's about a year younger than me. We're very close. Okay, and um, is, is your mother still with us, or? No, my mom died in 2000. Okay. And then my dad in 2000, well, 2009 is when he actually died, and it was uh, December. And so sort of that decade was sort of bookended by, by my parents uh, passing away, which I just realized that the other day. Because uh, um, I made an album after she died called The Boy Who Rode His Bike Around the World. Oh, nice. And um, it, was, it wasn't really written that when she died. She was very ill then. And after she passed away, I made an album called Charm Offensive, and then, which was it's a really good album. And then the next one was called Flicker of Time, which is sort of, you know, has to do with the passing of time. And now this one, so it's like, I want to make a record next where it's just, you know, everybody's around and it's happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what's the what's the next album going to be? Because it sounds, it seems to be all sad, and they're not really sad songs per no, se. They're not really. Mm -hmm. So then, what what would be your next project going on? The next album is definitely going to be with the band. Right. Uh, um, I've got most of the songs written, or at least what I think will be most of the songs. I'll put it this way, I've got a bunch of songs written that um, seem to be pointing the, the way for the next one. Because I have a, a solo band called The Oblivion Click. Okay. Which is me and uh, Robbie Rist and um, Derek Anderson, just fantastic. And um, I was wondering if you, because you are a guitar player, if you have your guitar with you, maybe you can... Uh play some chords and uh, sing us a little tune or a chorus or verse of anything you want. Well, it's funny you'd say that. I just happen to have my guitar right here. Oh, beautiful. I love it. And what a coincidence. <laughs> and this is the, um, uh, the guitar that I wrote almost, I think, just about all the songs on the Projector album, um, album available now. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's this beautiful Guild guitar. Oh wow, nice. Yeah, but my uh, it was the first electric to, and it's an electric, uh, you know, hollow body electric guitar that my grandfather gave me when I was about fifteen. It was the first electric guitar that I ever had. Oh. But it works great as a as an acoustic guitar. So it has a good it. sound on it too. Yeah, and when you plug it in, no matter what amp you use, it's got this great thick kind of mid-rangey sound and it we use this on the entire record nice all right well here's steve barton making his musical appearance on entertainment extra with joe crawford on remick tv this is a song this is the first song on projector i'll play a little bit of this one that's called um <clears throat> these four walls okay and um it is early but i think i can i think <laughs> i can do it You've, have you had your morning coffee yet steve i've had my morning well, I'm having a cup of tea. You know, oh, tea! There you go. Oh, even there, there's the there's the English inspiration right there. Even the London right. England. Absolutely. Okay, here we go. All right. <laughs>
from translator, projectors, a CD. That, that is just awesome. And that's one of 18 songs. There are, no, I wrote, I played the 18 songs when I first played the stuff for Marvin. There's 12 on the CD. Okay, so 12, because we're going to say 18 is a lot to have on one album usually. Yeah, no, we did 12, and we recorded everything to two-inch tape, so it was recorded analog on reel-to-reel tape. Oh, my gosh. And then we mixed to quarter-inch tape, and um, uh, the whole thing was done in about five days. Wow. We'd, we'd record and mix as we went along. Yeah. So And we had to... We just bought one reel of um, two-inch tape, so we and you can fit about three songs on that. And so we would, you know, finish the song, do all the overdubs, mix it, do a couple more songs, same process. Then we'd say, okay, ready to commit? Absolutely, and erase it and record the other songs. Oh, jeez. So this was like a very focused, you know, five-day period. It was very intense. Wow. Now, how long does it usually, like, this will look like within five days, but usually how long does it take to write a song for you? That varies. I mean, to write a song, you know, <clears throat> like, I, the stuff I'm writing now, I've got, a lot of it's finished, but a lot of stuff's half finished. Some stuff came out right away, like, um, like the song I mentioned, uh, Super Fantastic Guy, you know, which was just a very quiet, you know, that was a song I'm just sitting here. Um, and it literally, I just started singing it. This way. Wasn't it strange last time I saw you? And then the whole song just wrote itself. Wow, awesome. SteveBartonMusic.com is the website. Steve, I want to thank you very much. I, um, it's a sad that it happened that your father passed away for this new album to come up, but it sounds like it's going to be a great hit. And iTunes, it can be purchased on. And Steve, I want to thank you very much. You're more than welcome to come on the show anytime. And maybe if Translator's up in Toronto, we can have you guys come in the studio and maybe perform great. for us. That would be great. Oh. And when people, you know, buy the record, it's not a bunch of really sad songs, just so they know. There's a lot of upbeat songs. One song's called Pie in the Face, which is a very, like, crazy kind of um, uh, upbeat, weird rockabilly song. So it's all sorts of cool stuff on it, but it, it was written under that umbrella of, of that time. Beautiful. Steve Barton, the album, again, is Projector. Find it at your local music stores and also, again, on iTunes. Steve, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. And here's your little theme song ending interview uh, and segment ending theme song. Ready? Okay, here we go. Martin, thank you very much, and thanks for watching here on Entertainment Extra with yours truly, Joe Crawford on RemakeTV.com. Watch all our shows. Take care, everybody.